All right, so we've got a air conditioner here. It's the only one for this whole building. And this is an interesting building. They have no heat in it at all. And uh, basically, uh, the way this thing's heated, not that it really matters since we're here for air conditioning, but the way it's heated is with all the reach-ins. They literally have like 13, 14 reach-in coolers downstairs. So the heat off of those are what actually makes it uh, heat, uh, that's what actually heats it in the uh, winter. So anyhow, we're up here, it's turned on, it's an old T87 thermostat. It's obviously not running, they turn it on and off sometimes and that gets it going. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't when they do that. So pretty much gonna start with the basics. Yeah, that's a little dirty. Oh, you can't hardly see through it. That's not helping it none. Wonder how long it's been. Oh, since July of 18. The evaporator's somewhat clean. The economizer's closed. We're gonna eliminate that as a problem right there. Belt driven. Two pressure switches there, which looks like one is probably for fan cycle possibly, or in the other one's probably a high pressure cutout. You got a freeze sensor over there in the back corner. It's hard to believe they do pretty good on their commercial stuff, just not this garbage. Oh my god, we actually do have a Jade controller in there. <laughs> Wonder who updated that. Fancy Nancy. Status economizer available. Oh, look at that. There goes the air conditioning. Economizing, no. Occupied, yes. Y1 in, Y1 out, yes. Y2, no. It's not a single, it's not two stage. Mixed air temperature, 89 degrees. Outdoor air temperature, 91. Outdoor humidity. I should just shut down. So we know that we've got thermostat calling, and we know that it's sending it on its merry way to the contactor. So something is shutting it down. I wonder if we've got a pressure switch shutting it down for some reason. So we have a clean coil and we've got airflow. Now granted it is pulling pretty hard on this cover, but I doubt it's a uh, airflow issue. It could be. At this point, we're gonna gauge up. Okay, we restarted it again. And just doing a quick hand feel method here. We're not, uh, starting to get colder. Our liquid line is kind of hot. So that could be a sign of being low on charge. So let's hook on this thing and see what we've got. I always like to check to see if they've got the O-ring in there. Good. Okay, that depressor's way in there. We can either pull this thing out or we can back out that. We can back out the Schrader core with the tool. There we go. That worked. So now we've got it. 
they have a hole there that you could use. Really not interested in it right this given moment. So, boy, it is windier and heck of it. All right, looking at our head pressure. Now, if you noticed, she's now running quite a while. They fail out two times in less than a minute or two. Now all of a sudden we're running for a good duration. So our superheat is high, our subcooling's high. Need to know whether this is a TXV or an orifice. It's got about 67 degrees. That ain't too bad for as hot as it is. While we're doing that, I guess we could go ahead and get these economizer filters cleaned. Just a touch dirty. And the other thing I wanted to check while we had this out was to make sure that the economizer is actually closed and that it wasn't malfunctioning, which it is not, which is good. 137 degrees coming out of that. Yeah, we got dirt. We definitely got dirt inside that coil. 138 degrees. So let's just say 92. That sounds about believable. So we're about what 46 degrees. Sounds about right. So we got water right back here at the back door. I was checking if they had water back here, but these things are flood solid, so we're gonna clean those off real quick too. I went ahead and washed those out, sprayed them out, where it's knocked all that dirt and crap out. I mean, it's not what I'm here for, but you know, it won't be long. I'll be on call, and this is a potential call I'll have to get, and it never fails. It happens at nighttime, so I'm just going to do it while I'm here, uh, and then just washed off the coils quickly because that's a concrete floor. They do this in northern climates to try to control the ambient temperatures when it gets colder out. So you'll see this quite often around here. So anyhow, I got my hose out. I'm gonna drag it up there. Hopefully out of reach. If not, I've got more. It's kind of interesting. I can hear it still running, which concerns me a little bit as to why it ran for such a short duration of time and then stopped. Uh, pressure's looking a little better on the suction. So we're bringing that temperature down. Superheat is 13, subcooling 17 down to 77-ish. So let's get this washed out and see how she does. You can hear that compressor equalizing. Let's see what we got going on. Yeah, it's coming through, but I think I'm going to pop this top and we're going to see if we can split this coil. I've had times where it comes through okay, but the, the freaking uh, coils are packed in between. So we're going to pop this thing, take a look inside here, see if we can make it really, really clean. Yep. There's the dual coils. Crap gets caught in between there. These aren't going to be very easy to split. Good God. The screws are holding her together. Not as horrific as I've seen in the past, but we can definitely get it cleaner than what it was. This is uh, splitting the coil. Let's see what happens is it just blows it right onto the other coil. 
if they're tight together. And then yeah, you'll get some water through it, but not as good as if you do it in between. Then I like to shoot it straight down and knock it downwards out of a off the coil. Okay, we just dumped out the trap here. You can see that beautiful, nice crap that we got out of it. So uh, we got the hose up here. We'll go ahead and flush that out real good. stabilize a little bit. Head pressure is still rising a little bit. We're still drying off the coil. We had 326 before and 80. So we'll give it a touch here to find its happy spots. Never can rush it even with 22. 22 is quicker than 410 but you rush it you'll get yourself in trouble. While we're doing that we're going to check amperage on that fan motor. If I can find that, I know it's 1.2 amps is what I was reading on the Tita tag here on the side of the motor. Here's probably our fan. It's 4.7. It's probably the fan for the, for the blower. 1.3, 1.2. So we're right. Here we'll hold that. So we're right in line with what it's rated for. I'll check that capacitor here in a minute when we get done. See where that's at. For giggles, because I know there's a lot of people out there that always get excited if you don't check all your voltages. 208, 208, 208. Well, that's a balanced system, ain't it? Let's see what our to ground is. See if we got any wild legs. gonna put a couple of screws in this freaking roof here that uh, they got a ridge vent a ridge cap I should say we'll screw in just that that'll at least get it to where the water won't leak right down to the top I've told them about it before they don't do anything about it the problem is there's a good chance with us standing here that that's the reason why it happened so hard to say we're gonna let this thing do its Stabilization here, six on the superheat, 288 on head, so 98. So we're about 40 pounds, 38 pounds difference, lower than we were before. Not looking bad now. Just put some screws on the outside edge corners, the slits in the middle. It'd uh, be good enough for them to finally get their roofer guy out here. It, uh, it's better than having a wide open top. Something's better than nothing. They're ruined, so it ain't like I did it any worse. And they can always patch over it if they're really that worried about it. It's been running for a while now. Running 16.5 subcooling, 7 for superheat. So it's still doing really good. It hasn't shut off once. We're going to go ahead and double check that capacitor. Um, so between the coil being a little bit dirty and the filters being plugged I would say that had a lot to do with it but I'm still not 100% convinced that that's all there is so that's why I want to check a few other things just to make certain so refrigerant wise I think we're looking good just gonna investigate a little bit more get some more clues because I don't like the way that it shut off like I said the J control was telling us that it was receiving a signal from the thermostat. So we know we've eliminated the thermostat as a possible issue, even though it's a old T87 Mercury thermostat. Um, I'd like to see the fan being driven on, constant on. So I'll probably flip that on downstairs. But otherwise, refrigerant sense, it's, it's no problem. That's why I like using this charge. Like I said, there is a free stat on this thing. High pressure, 
loss of pressure, low pressure, that's a temperature. Contactor, so that's about the only sensors we've got. It's high pressure, low pressure, and a temperature sensor, which that one uh, opens on a drop in temperature, so that's your free stat. Those are the only three things we've got in line with the contactor. The 1M, not real sure what that stands for. Compressor contactor. 1M, well then what the hell is a K1? Usually K's relay. Compressor lockout relay, okay, so they got a compressor lockout relay. That's old school. So anyhow, like I said, I'm gonna shut this down. Not sure what that is that was bypassed. Hard to say. Yep. I don't know, all you can do is look over the obvious stuff and uh, check all these things and kind of go from there. I mean, we've got some major improvements over what we had before. Okay, 4.9, not bad. Capacitor's fine, amp draw's fine, motor might be taking a dump, who knows. I, I don't, I think the motor was running when I had it cut out the first time, so I don't even think that's really an option as to why it would have done what it did. I'm still leaning back to, maybe it was the freeze up possibly, uh, free switch or potentially the high pressure switch, but usually they don't trip that low. Usually they're a little higher, I would think. Okay, I'm one of those pricks that takes away your sticker. P380, I'm gonna say it was 380, it was a PSI rating on that. What, uh, PSI switch, 380. Cut out. So I ain't totally bad. At least somebody will know what that is. Chances are it's probably gonna get bypassed as old as this thing is. And then uh, right there is the uh, freeze stat. I'm gonna say let's kick it back on, let her do her thing. I think I'm going to. Yeah, it sounds really good. Order a new belt while I'm at it. A36. Might as well get it now while we're here. That uh, when we come back, it's ready for next year. We'll get them some new ones. I think that's gonna wrap this one up. We'll uh, let it run for just a little bit. Make sure it don't cut out. Only one last thing we forgot to look at, and that was the contactor, which our contact points look good. We have no black marks anywhere on it. No tarnish or anything like that. And it's freely doing its thing. These sometimes are great. They keep the bugs out, but they also sometimes make it very difficult to see what the heck's going on in there. So there we go. There we go. All right, guys, if you like the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and click the notification bell. Well, look at this. We come back to do the uh, filters and belts, and it was locked out, turned it back on, and looky there. The freaking uh, fan's not running. I was wondering about it. Sure enough, that's what it is. Okay, so right here is the reason why don't really matter sometimes if you check the amp draw and capacitors and all that crap because I just got done changing that motor in this weather right here. Boo hoo, boo hoo. Thunder lightning and all that, but I still got it done. So, all of a sudden done, this is going to finish out the video that I was working on last night, so I'm going to add this to it. But I just want to let you guys know this is the kind of crap that you'll be working in sometimes that are new guys. You can't be a crybaby and go hide inside. Sometimes you gotta be a little wild and go out and get the work done, even when it's raining like this. So, you gotta work fast, gotta work smart. You see lightning, time you gotta get off the roof, but it was just thundering a little bit. It looked like it might be a tornado was coming, but other than that, we got it done. So, a little bonus footage there. So, until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.